This is how I got the achievements in Titanfall. Titanfall 2 starts here, the tutorial. You do what you expect here. You learn how to slide, wall grind, and of course, you learn how to shoot. But this tutorial has something that any person who's grinded the achievements for this game will revere. The time trial, known as the most difficult achievement in Titanfall 2, becomes the master. For this achievement, you have to place in the top three of the gauntlet leaderboard. And trust me, it's harder than it sounds. All right, let's see if I can just do it first try. No, I suck. I died. Look at that. Oh my god, I'm a god already. Stop, stop! Ah, oh, yes, one minute. Let's go. Even though you need 33 seconds. <laughs> Even though I knew this achievement was going to be difficult, I immediately found myself getting hooked on trying my luck. Let's go! Oh my god, I'm so slow! Come on, dude! Come on, Grandpa! Up again. Oh, oh. Okay, I got one. Oh, come on, beat my old record. Yes, by 15 seconds. Let's go. Before I knew it, I got my first achievement, the student, which was to beat Pilot Anderson's Gauntlet Ghost Recorder time, which was an absolute breeze. If you haven't noticed, I think it's about 50 seconds. I knew if I were to stand a chance, I would need to at least improve at the movement this game had to offer. Thus marked the beginning of the achievements. Stage one. The campaign. Oh yeah, by the way, right when I started the campaign, another achievement popped. The Graduate. I've never touched this game before, but there's an achievement called Legendary Pilot where I had to complete the game on Master Difficulty, and luckily for me, following this achievement, the rest of the difficulty achievements would unlock. So only one playthrough was required. I just hope that this difficulty wouldn't bite me in the ass. We finally get into the story after the Apex Predators, who are the villains of this game, attack. And I get to actually try and shoot my guns at moving targets. Boy, are the guns in this game ever so satisfying. And then I immediately forgot I was playing on Master Difficulty and got absolutely laser beamed. I'm down- oh. Alright, the bad guys are those guys, got it. Eventually I start getting used to the AI and start moving forward up until the point where I got my pilot suit and met with my Titan. It was here that I took a step back to admire the environmental detail in this game. I mean, just look at it. Now that I got that out of my system, I moved on with my new gear and with the breeze in my face, flew around the level. It was at this moment I could already tell that this game was going to be amazing. After some navigating and shooting of the enemies, <laughs> I retrieved my Titan's battery Give me that. and made my way back to the beginning where I spotted something oh. in the distance. It was my first pilot helmet. The pilot helmets in this game are the collectibles, which are almost always put in cool spots where you have to do parkour and traverse the levels to obtain them. This one of course wasn't very hard to get to because it was level 1, but you'll see in the future of this video that some of them are kinda crazy. After installing the first battery and meeting BT, he's in need of a second one to fully power up, so that's where we go next. We once again traverse the level until we get the battery. We finally arrive all the way back to install the second battery, only to find there's enemies patrolling the area. I make quick work of the soldiers and immediately put the second battery in BT. That is when the achievement BT Prime popped up. I finally got the control of Titan, and luckily, the game tasked me with mowing down hordes of enemies. It felt fantastic. Alright. Titan. Attack on Titan. It's finally time to start chapter 2 and immediately starting it off we have enemy titans that need their butts kicked. And yes, I was having a hell of a good time doing it. Oh, I'm going in. I'm going in. Ugh! Yeah, don't get cooking! Real steel action. Almost immediately after my titan fun, they separate me oh, and BT. So I'm back being a pilot, but this <laughs> time there's a lot more enemies what and that, that master difficulty is starting to actually bite me in the ass. What the? What? I just got dropped so fast. What do we got? What is a Kraber? I, I'm dead. Oh, fun slip and slide. Woohoo! Uh oh. Eventually, we meet up with the boys once again, but now we're in the sewer doo doo poo poo level. Touch any of the slime, you'll get damaged. While traversing through the slime, I eventually run into a helmet. I see a helmet. Which this, after about maybe 10 this. minutes, I finally figured out how to get. No. Dump. Jump. Okay, we got it. After tearing through what felt like hundreds of enemies, I randomly find and grab another two helmets. Nice. Really easy. Eventually, I end up here. A pretty difficult part of this chapter oh, where a million enemies spawn and what suicide bombing spiders start oh. to chase you. I, 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 
Wow, okay. It took a while, but I found a little hiding spot up high where the humans couldn't shoot me, but it still didn't stop the spiders from coming, though. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, God. After multiple attempts, BT and I met up once again and treaded along, and not long after, my first boss appeared. You were not invited to Kane's party, and that's why you're dead. <laughs> yep, that's one for the cringe compilation, Kane. Kane was easy. You shoot, nuke, core, kite. Shoot, nuke, core, kite. You like that damage? And before I knew it, he was already dead. Oh. Oh, alright. Every one of the five bosses in this game each have their own designated achievements. Hot Mess is the one for Kane. I took his comms and moved on to Chapter 3. Almost immediately starting, the game gave me one of my favorite loadouts for BT called Scorch. You probably guessed, but yes, it does light the world on fire. These... Okay, I'm dead. I died to a Christmas tree, unironically. Yes, I actually lost to a Christmas tree. No! Dude, why am I dying to the environment more often than the guys with guns? It was indeed really, really stupid. But I found my footing at some point. And then out of nowhere, BT gets kidnapped. No! Of course it was up to me to save him. So I made my way to his destination. The foundry. Oh! But not before I yoink this helmet. Hello. Another easy helmet. Oh! That's when I unlocked the achievement, Some Shortcut, just for making it here. You unlock Some Shortcut. The Foundry has a set of weird Ikea-like moving platforms that you have to traverse through the level on. And each small area it drops you on has hordes of enemies. I died on this particular hey. platform several times. Oh, uh, uh. Why am I addicted to punching things? Eventually, when I got through this mini gauntlet of a challenge, the world tipped sideways. The sideways town, so they call it. And once I got to the top, I gained the achievement Incepted. After that, I entered Ash's Simulation Dome. It looked like she wanted to test my skill, but eventually she just flat out wanted to kill me. Oh jeez, Peter. RUN! I'm not afraid to admit that oh, I struggled no. a little bit on oh, Ash's we're game. In deep trouble now. Oh, now we're really in trouble. Oh, give me a weapon, please. Please give me a weapon. Oh. Right? No. With the Reaper Titan on my tail and the countless enemies across the map sniping me with their assault rifles, it was quite challenging. Okay. Oh, I got an achievement. I was right. That was the achievement. I'm not locked in here with you. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you- Oh my god, he punched me! Why? One horrible checkpoint, and a dozen attempts later, I cleared yes, it. Yes, okay. The next part of chapter 3 began, and this level was really cool looking, but it was quite the breeze. Oh, and by the way, we found another helmet. Yes, give me that. Right after that, we recover BT, and he has a rocket loadout for us to play with. Good thing there's Titans right in front of us. Whee! You want somebody? After destroying the titans and a little bit more navigating, our second boss finally shows up. Oh! Who is that? Is that her? That's her. It looks like BT. Nope, nope. We don't need the photo. She's actually kind of cool Shrek. Yep. She's cool. Her titan was a melee based one. She can go invisible and she mostly attacks from close range. Oh wow. Oh, I want that titan. Despite all this, she's very mobile and it made running away really difficult. <sighs> oh, that hurts. After a close battle, I brought her to low health and I finished her off with her specialty. Oh, execution style? <laughs> what? Another one of the bosses slain. Dust the Dust was Ash's achievement. But on top of that, we gain Coupe de Grasse for executing her with a melee animation. <laughs> he won't be in Titanfall 3. It was time to move on to Chapter 4, Effect and Cause. It was immediately apparent that time all around me was warping. Oh no. As we were meeting up with BT, there was a oh. few helmets out in the open to grab before progressing. Alright. 
Got the two helmets in this area. BT then told me to find and gather info from Major Anderson. Only thing was, the man was dead. I grabbed his helmet anyways and headed back. Only for BT to tell me the other half of his corpse held the device that we were searching for. So he checked the telephone pole and off I went. Oh! Yep, you saw that correctly. When you kill an enemy in the past, their corpse will stay there and become decayed in the future. That is cool. It didn't take long to reach Anderson, and I grabbed his device. I unlocked the time travel device, one of the coolest abilities I've used in any video game. At one point, I needed to travel through time to enter a broken cage from the future, to enter it and kill the prowler from the past. Achievement unlocked. It was coming right for us. As I was progressing through the level, I came across the section that showcases the ability pretty well. Heal up. It was clear that I was having way too much fun with this level. Hello! Holy smokes, why is this side more dangerous? Ah! Ah! What the hell? Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! After having my fun, I made it to Anderson's first video log, which unlocked the achievement following the footsteps. Oh! Oh my god, those guys scared me. Ironically, those turret bots were guarding a free helmet, which actually unlocked me another achievement, off the beaten path for finding 10 collectibles. Shortly after, I entered a cool section, one that actually made me use my brain with the ability to swap time during jumps. One of the more interesting helmets I had to get here. I had to wall grind back and forth between two walls between times. I just confused the living hell out of myself. Don't worry, I got it the second time. I got it? This part right here was short, but I heavily enjoyed it. Oh my god! I now needed to return to BT. With his help, I can annihilate the remaining soldiers from the past, which is exactly what I proceeded doing. Up until I was gifted a new loadout to play with called Ion. The Ion loadout is essentially a sniper titan. This will seriously come in handy in the future. The action was cut short by the arc exploding. What happened? which in turn froze time. I now had to move through this really cool frozen time platforming section. After doing a bit of navigation, I reached and scanned the arc. BT then congratulated me and gifted me an achievement for finishing the mission. It was then off to chapter 5, The Beacon. Almost immediately after starting this chapter, the game gave me another loadout. Ronin, the sword loadout. After clearing the area, I entered the beacon control room where I met with Captain Cole. He told me that the beacon has no power and that someone would need to retrieve the arc tool to restore it. Looks like it's another job for me. In almost no time, I navigated through the substation and grabbed the arc tool. Hey, another achievement. This of course was another achievement. Unlicensed nuclear accelerator. In order to return to Captain Cole, I needed to complete a new set of platforming puzzles. But first, let me quickly grab this helmet. Woohoo! A free helmet! I quickly got through the fan mini puzzles and returned to <laughs> Captain Cole. Oh my god! Holy smokes! He then forced me to walk through a highly radiated area to restore the power. Oh yeah. I did it with glee as it popped me another achievement, calling CQ. And, of course, the module explodes. Again, it was up to me to find them a working module. Immediately I noticed many helmets in this area, but they weren't accessible yet. It was then BT decides to show me his football skills and throw me to my next destination. Oh. After he throw me, I'm greeted with this giant construction site with multiple cranes to help me navigate my way. Once again, this area is absolutely loaded with enemies. No! Oh. Making my way through this area, I found loads of helmets. In fact, I managed to obtain 8 out of 9 helmets in this entire level by the end. Approaching near the end of the level, there is a bunch of stalker drones that can be made your ally using the arc tool. I did this with a big group of them and two separate achievements popped. Hyde Piper for activating a single stalker rack and Robot Army for converting 6 or more stalkers to my side. I then moved this giant satellite thing which really pissed the next boss, Richter, off. After dealing with Richter's goons, I made my way up the dish and grabbed the new module. I immediately headed back to BT as he was under attack by Richter's boys and assisted him. But honestly, it didn't really look like he needed any help. <laughs> After clearing the baddies, BT threw me again so I could replace the broken module, which I replaced as soon as possible. Before moving on, I want to try and attempt to get this helmet. Oh! 
Oh, parkour master coming in. I felt like my mission here was done, so I decided to return to Captain Cole when suddenly Richter jumps down on top of me. Oh shoot, is it him? Care to have a real fight? Let's see what you got up close and personal. All right, boss battle. I noticed really fast that being close to Richter was a death sentence as he just nukes your health bar with projectiles. So I decided to use the sniper loto and stick to cover in the rocks. Oh. We traded many blows, but in the end, I'm the protagonist, and I'm allowed to get health packs, so of course I won. Actually, it, it was still kind of close. Oh my god. I got him, I think. Get him, please! Why is he invincible? Did he suicide bomb us? Okay, no, he's dead. But alas, Richter was dead. That was boss 3 of 5, and his achievement was, see you at the party. After using the beacon to get into contact with the rest of the allies, we meet Commander Sarah Briggs. Wait a minute. Lastimosa linked you to a rifleman? Yes. He had no other options. Understood. We'll get you transferred to a fully qualified pilot. And I don't like her. We then moved on to Chapter 6, and immediately were thrown into all-out warfare. After facing the brunt of the attack, me and Sarah Briggs moved deeper. <laughs> until I found a brand new, new loadout. Titan. North Star, one of, if not the most useful loadouts to deal with the Titans in the game. It puts the last loadout to shame in sniping capabilities. I mean, just look at this crazy damage. Wow, that does a lot. After trudging through a million more Titans, we make it to the enemy ship where they take off with the important cargo. Hence this next achievement that popped, Precious Cargo. And now, after that short onslaught, we are on to Chapter 7 already, the final mission, the Ark. Shortly after shooting down a few ships, we are greeted with Viper, the fourth, and in my opinion, the hardest boss in the game. Viper? He shoots me down and we land on an ally ship, where it didn't take long for BT to want to throw me again. Now, go. Dude, dude! Wait, wait, I, I can... What do you mean, now, go? Wait, wait! <laughs> that would confuse anybody! After decimating the enemies on board the Malta, we hack the Malta's bridge controls and we meet up with BT again. <laughs> this is where we encountered Viper. Two to one. Viper's on oh, here we go, Viper. Ends here, pilot. From the very beginning, this boss fight also makes you fight multiple fodder titans, which while they're easy, he takes pot shots from behind them which deal a very high amount of damage. Another thing is the shields tend to not block his missile barrage as they fly around it. Yo, why doesn't it block anything? As you may have guessed it, he mostly stays aflight from a far distance, making the sniper loto it's the only viable option. After a very close fight, and I mean very, I managed to take him down. Yes! That's four of the five bosses completed. Just one more for all the boss achievements. Of course, right before BT throws me again, we get jumped by the half-dead Viper, and BT takes damage. We swiftly finish him off, but by then, the Malta begins to lose altitude. We decide to move inside the Malta and head towards the Ark, in which we secure it shortly after. Another achievement unlocks. And almost immediately after, the Malta goes down, and BT attempts to sacrifice himself for us. We wake up to the main villain, and as soon as we got it, the Ark gets forced out of BT and he gets put down for good. Rest in peace, BT. Just kidding. New BT. Achievement unlocked. Titanfall. Upon jumping into the new BT, I noticed he had the final new loadout, the Legion. Achievement unlocked, Jack of all trades. With this new loadout, I had no problem blowing through the hordes of titans coming my way. We storm the fold weapons facility and eventually meet it with Sloan, our final boss. Sloan. Maybe I do have to- Yeah, okay, I had to fight the girl first. With the minigun, she was a huge pushover. Oh, DPS race! Let's go, got her. And with Sloan dead, every boss achievement was completed. After Sloan's defeat, we mash E with all our might. Ugh, yeah. And easy. pull the arc out of the injector. The blast from the injector ended up overloading BT, and Kane shows up again to give us our very own exclusive trading card. Apex Legends? BT stands back up, and we... I, I mean, he finishes the mission. Trust me. Oh, we're going for one more throw. Achievement unlocked the real pilot's gauntlet. And shortly after that, the game was finished, leaving me with three more achievements for beating the game on all difficulties. That's the damn earth destroyed. We can finally move on to step two, the cleanup. I headed back in the game through the mission select to pick the trial by fire chapter on easy. That way I can quickly obtain achievements like hat trick to destroy three titans with one core ability. Speaking of core abilities, there were seven separate achievements for each loadout. One to destroy a titan with each core. The burst core, the flight core, the salvo core, 
the sword core, the laser core, the smart core, and lastly, the flame core. The next two achievements were a 2-in-1 special, with Cowboy Up having me rodeo an enemy titan, and You Can Be My Wingman Anytime, which has me destroy an enemy titan as a pilot. Annihilation saw me going back to the last mission to group up a bunker full of enemies, then executing 25 of them in 2 seconds. Let's go. I know Kung Fu and Power Slide. To shoot and kill three enemies in a row while wall running, and to shoot and kill three enemies in a row while sliding. Both easy. I then went back to Chapter 2 to keep Lieutenant Shaver and Lieutenant Freeborn alive during her small Titan battle, which on easy was a breeze. There it is, close shave. And while I was still on Chapter 2, I grabbed the achievement Apex Predator to perform a melee takedown while cloaked. Now we were missing the true cleanup achievements, the collectibles. I swiftly moved chapter to chapter to find all the helmets I missed, and luckily, I actually only missed about half of them, so it really didn't take me that long at all. Don't mind me, guys. I'm, uh, I'm elusive. I feel like I'm running a payday dodge build right now. Give me that. Let's go! Every nook and cranny. Let's go. Also, I forgot the story mission for retrieving the working module. We are now only missing 4 achievements, 3 of which are multiplayer related. I booted up multiplayer for the first time and customized my loadout for an achievement. I then joined a network and started my first ever multiplayer match. Unsurprisingly, while having no idea what I was doing, the multiplayer was a lot of fun. Oh! Oh, I got one! I got a kill! Oh ho 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 ho! Stand tall for Titanfall! <gasps> oh my god, I thought that was a player. Oh, got him. Why am I the worst player? Ooh! <laughs> I wonder if I can... <gasps> yes! I did it! See, idiot? I see a man. Wait. Oh my god, I can... I can ride my friend? Wh what? Alright, let's go. That is not where I clicked. Uh oh. That, oh! I killed someone! I dropped it on a Titan! Luckily, I won my very first game and gained another two achievements one for winning and one for joining a multiplayer network. We are now onto the final stage. Stage three becomes the master. We are on the final but most notably difficult achievement becomes the master. Okay. Whew. We need a final time of 33.65 seconds, and I was overconfident going in. That's an L. That's an L. Why does that have to hit me every time? Ah, okay, this will take more warming up than I thought I would need. Why? 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 Already five attempts, and I couldn't even reach the end without making a major mistake. No way! Oh, I ran out of ammo! It was clear that I might be here for a while. Oh, wow. Oh, I got caught! Oh, that was trash. At least I finally finished one lap. Occasionally, my grenades would just not kill anything, which added to the attempt count. Excuse me? Aw, oh, damn. Eventually, I gave up on normal attempts and looked up any way easier, and immediately, one of the methods showed a hidden weapon. I got it. Let's go. The EPG. Using this reduced the need to actually aim at the targets, and there was even a spot where I could kill three with one shot without using any grenades. But it still didn't stop me from sucking. After all these attempts and around an hour later, I ended up getting rather decent and consistent. That was a good shot. <gasps> Why? Why? Why couldn't I finish it? Why couldn't I finish it? Why did I tie my old time? I was heartbroken, but as I said, I became really consistent and finally, after all those attempts, I got this run. That's it. This is it right here. An okay beginning. Okay. Okay. 
I wasted a lot of ammo there. Turn the corner here. Turn it. Okay. I don't even see the ghost in sight. <gasps> yes! Yes! Oh my god, I predicted it! Oh my god, becomes the master. Unlocked. What? Let's go, Titanfall. It's completed. It was over. As I stated, Titanfall 2 was complete. This journey was stated as a 6 out of 10 difficulty and only took me 12 hours to complete. If you made it all the way to the end and enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as every other week I'll be diving into a different game. Here's a little hint towards next week's game. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week.